Well, later today, friends and family will say goodbye to 16-year-old Imani Bell. Georgia teen collapsed and died after doing conditioning drills. This was at an outdoor basketball practice on one of the hottest days of the year. Now her family wants to know if the school violated the rules by allowing students to go outside for practice. Koi Wire meteorologist Allison Chinchar uh, with us now to, to talk about this because there have to be guidelines, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the only instance. I mean, the CDC says more than 600 people in the U.S. are killed by extreme heat every year. And a new Climate Central study just released this week looks at 239 locations in the U.S. and nearly 200 of them saw an increase in the last four decades of their average number of days where the heat index topped 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's making outdoor sports in the summertime more dangerous. It's forcing schools across the the nation uh, change how they decide when to practice outside and when it just becomes too dangerous. Traditionally, people often use the heat index. This is fine for normal everyday activities such as gardening or taking kids to a park because most of those activities don't involve intense exercise. One thing we try to do is be proactive, um, especially the best interests of the kids and just making sure that we're putting their safety you know, first in everything that we do. So we always get with the trainers and we come up with a plan. Some schools and organizations are switching to a method of measurement used by the military for decades to help prevent heat related illnesses. It's called wet bulb globe temperature. Using a wet bulb globe temperature device can help coaches and parents better determine things like when to have hydration breaks, length of practices or playtime, and rest ratios. But once it gets to 92, that's when we say they can't practice outdoors. Um, before that, they can do things like modify what they're wearing. They can do shells, which would be without the pads, they would still wear the helmets. But once we get to a point where it's that high, we just call it. All right, Allison, clearly this guy is hot. He's overheating, but it's not just the temperature making him sweat like this. Right, so Koi, in normal environmental conditions, when you sweat, that sweat evaporates off your body like it's doing to this gentleman here. That effectively cools your skin off. But in a high humidity environment, that sweat cannot evaporate properly. Because of that, it means that that sweat stays on your skin, making it feel as though you're wearing an extra layer of clothes. No one wants to wear a sweater playing sports in the summer, essentially is what you're saying. So humidity, very important. What other elements do we need to consider? Right, so Heat index is very important. It measures temperature as well as the humidity, but there's other things to factor. Clay, when was the last time you ever saw an entire practice done in the shade? <laughs> I don't think that happens. Never. So that's just it. Wet bulb globe temperature also takes into account the sun angle, cloud cover, and wind speed, which is why this method is much better at monitoring student athletes. Much more detail. What can you do to help prevent heat stroke and other heat related illnesses in the summertime? The CDC says you can wear loose fitting, lightweight clothing, stay hydrated, protect against uh, sunburn with SPF and also take it easy during the hottest times of the day. That's right. And know the signs of heat stroke. Okay, this is going to be very important. Very intense headaches, unconsciousness, confusion, and your skin will be red hot, but actually dry. You will stop sweating at that point. That is the sign that you need to seek help. And this is the device that those schools use to take those readings, the proper readings to get a better idea of what the heat's impact is on those athletes. Your parents bodies. can find out if you're concerned. Does your school have one? If not, maybe ask that they get one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good points. Mm -hmm. Allison Coy, thank you both so mm -hmm. much.